Hello, I'm Rosemary Hanna, your host of the series, The Bahamas Then and Now, that deals with our history, heritage, arts, and culture. We'll talk about those persons who were involved with and others who continue to be involved with the guarding of our Bahamian heritage. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. We have with us today cultural icon Patricia Dean Bazard, otherwise known as Pat. Welcome to the show, Pat. Thank you. It's just wonderful to be here. It's really nice to have you here. Tell us, uh, what was it like growing up in Baintown? Uh, Baintown, as you know, was, has been the place where I was born, I was raised. And the wonderful thing about Baintown that, that I remember was that you were raised by everybody in the neighborhood. It was one big family. Um, everyone on the street between Hospital Lane and all the way up to Meadow Street for us, everyone knew who you were. Everyone knew whose child you were. If you passed 10 houses and didn't say good morning to every single person, my mother knew that by the time you got back. And by the time you got back, she was there with her switch hitting against her thigh, waiting for you to what she's saying, you think you're a woman. But it was such a, a, a close-knit community. Um, I grew up with, with, with the family, my, with cousins, my uncle and his family on one side, and other cousins on the other side of us. And across the street were just plain neighbors, but they all were now, as we call them, old aunties and old uncles because that was the kind of rapport we had in that neighborhood. So what, what sort of values were instilled to you, all of the children in the neighborhood? Well, the first thing was that you had to respect. Number one, as my mother said, you had to respect yourself, and then you respect every single adult. And um, she was of the, of the opinion that once you respect yourself, it's automatic almost that you're mm -hmm. going to respect everyone else. And so the, the love in the, that we shared in the neighborhood was not only shared because someone hugged you, but because you knew that they literally cared for you as their own. Um, for instance, the, you may have, you came home, your mother was not at home. The house was unlocked anyway. But the neighbors would make certain that you were inside the house. You don't come out because you know Miss Dana wants you out, you're out playing in the street. And so if you come out on the porch, here comes Ms. Outen, what are you doing on the porch? Go inside, your mother is not at home. This, this kind of caring and sharing in, in the neighborhood. So other than your mother, who were the people and, and your immediate family, who were the people who had a profound effect on you and your sister growing up? Um, for us, basically those persons at church. Um, for me, particularly my godparents, I had um, the godparents then were, were parents to you. Unlike parent, um, godparents now, they buy you gifts and, and pat you on the head and that's it. But my, god, my godmother, um, for instance, she was the one that used to take me around to the plays. Anytime there was a play, um, St. Agnes and, uh, used to have plays. There used to be some plays at Wesley Schoolroom, um, the, the IOD Hall, and then there was a place by Mara Lumber Company, Ebenezer. But I didn't know it as Ebenezer. I, it was just a, this big hall that they used to have. The last thing I saw there was the old ship of Zion. Uh, things like this. She was the one that took me to all these things because she liked them herself. She also, um, my godfather, was the one that um, steered my musical um, um, life because he was the one that started me on my musical track. And, and who was your godfather? Um, Maxwell Stubbs. Okay, yes. Maxwell mm -hmm. Stubbs. Mm -hmm. And also, um, he was the one that made me feel that I could do all, everything. He keep telling me, you could do anything you wish. And the, the, the verse, at first I thought, he said that, I didn't know it was in the Bible, that I can do all things. And he, he would just say, you are supposed to say mm -hmm. that all the time. Yes. You're supposed to say, I can do all things. He said, then try it. 
That was quite an inspiration. Yes. So when did you, um, well, obviously that started early on in your life. And what other sorts of entertainment did, was there for the children other than going to concerts and, and the like? Well, um, church was entertainment. Yes. Church <laughs> was the entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, I often say when I, when I speak that Sunday school was happy hour. The afternoon Sunday school. That was at Trans Transfiguration, at Baptist, Transfiguration Church. Baptist Church where I grew up. That was happy hour because you had Sunday school. After Sunday school was Baptist Training Union, BTU. But there was like an hour, an hour and a half between each. And so you'd walk out to Black's Candy Kitchen and get ice cream or onto Bay Street to watch the boats leave. Um, these, these were the, the entertaining, entertaining things. And then um, entertainment in the community was under the big connect tree. Okay, storytelling. Storytelling and, mm -hmm. and um, the puzzles and all the, the um, mar riddle, mar riddle Mirandio and the, the riddles that you had to try. And you know, everyone came with a different one and the old people. And it was that rapport we didn't have as they call this generation gap. Like some people think that we do have. There was no gap. Mm -hmm. And that included the, all of the children in the all neighborhood, the children, did it? Yes. All the children mm -hmm. in the yes. neighborhood. And, we, and the big connect tree was under, in my uncle's yard. Okay. And so everyone was under that connect tree and you sit there and then there was a big um, tub full of what they call rum sour, mm -hmm. which was lemonade. Mm -hmm. I understand now that it was a big um, tub of lemonade and then the men would put rum in it. <laughs> but the children, we got the lemonade. So who were your other music teachers other than um, your godfather? My godfather, start, mm. as I said, started me. And um, then I went to Miss, Mrs. Mallory. Oh, yes. Um, Muriel Mallory. Yes, yes. And um, after Miss Mallory, and I, I grew up a little, I went to um, Timothy Gibson as, as a music teacher. And, but before Timothy Gibson, I spent one week with Mr. Bain. <laughs> one week? That's Mr. Bain on Lewis Street. <laughs> on Lewis Street. <laughs> that didn't work too well. <laughs> but he, he seemed to have taught everything there, all of the yeah, instruments. Everything. So but it did, just didn't the, gel with you and no, Mr. Bain, I Just you walk in, mm -hmm. he had this stick. Oh. <laughs> and then you, he tell you, put the music in front of you, mm -hmm. play this. And so you there, because you're already afraid, because this is Did he wrap you on your knuckles? He hit you with the stick, yes. He ripped your knuckles and then whop you on your light tie if you <laughs> didn't quite get it. Come on, come on, come on. So that was the end of that. You and Mr. Ben, you parted company. <laughs> oh, listen, I could I couldn't, I told mommy I was scared of him, he's scary. And then he beat you and he did it. By the time I'd finished, I guess, elaborating on all of that, she said, that's all right, I'll find someone else. Okay. And so and I went to... You know, his building is still standing there on, on yes, Lewis Street. That's right. You know, later on in your career, you went into cultural affairs and you worked along with Clement Bethel. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, that was the best period of my life, my working life. Mm -hmm. And um, not only because I was doing something I loved, but also I was working with someone that I grew to love very much. Mm -hmm. Clement, I think, when he received the award as the best um, um, boss, boss of the year, um, that they, they used to have, I don't know oh, if they yes, still do yes. it. That was true. Everybody in my office, I had them all nominate him, nominate him every <laughs> because everyone wanted to come into cultural affairs. And um, be because of Clement, he made you feel as if you're the most important thing in that office. Everybody was a part of what was going on. Yes. And everybody's idea and comments, I'm talking from the janitress up, because um, with, when we did Sami Swain, um, he said, now I need everybody to come to the dress rehearsal. He said, um, um, he called me Pat, Pat is in it, so Pat, you have to be there. <laughs> but everyone in the office was yes, there, yes. and everyone was a part of it, either collecting the tickets or what have you, and everybody shared in what was going on. That's wonderful. Tell us a little bit about what inspired you and Wadri to start the National Children's Choir. On the 10th anniversary of, in, of the country's independence, Clement decided to um, form 
a youth choir. He said he wanted the young people to be a part of the celebrations. Because although we had the celebration in, in 73, 10 years later, um, during that interim, the, the, the young people didn't have a lot to do with the celebrations, mm -hmm. as active as I guess he expected. But um, he decided to start, uh, so we had the auditions and what have you at, at the college, at college of the Bahamas and um, formed the choir, the youth choir for that time. Also we had Sharon who is, um, who is now Sharon Stewart was also a member of our staff and um, she worked with, in the schools and so she formed a choir at, um, that's, that's in, in, in West Street in Hospital Lane and West Street, the school just in. Um, and she formed a choir with students from that school, children from that okay. school. So we had two groups um, that, that performed that were really new. The, um, the children's group did not, not, did not um, last. But before the, the, the um, organization of the youth choir, I had presented um, Clement with a three-tier um, choir plan. Pat, we have to take a break right now, but when we come back, we'll talk more about the choir. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. You're watching The Bahamas Then and Now. This episode is brought to you by The Private Trust Cooperation Limited, Dungalik Studios, FSS, First Security Systems, and Vodio. This is the Bahamas, 700 islands, reefs, and keys, sporting a distinct history and heritage all its own. This is New Providence, most populated, industrialized island at the center of the archipelago, home of Nassau, the capital city, seat of parliament, Location of political and social revolution, site from which our nation declared its independence. And this is Over the Hill, a community, a series of neighborhoods in what was then considered Southwest New Providence. Settled by slaves, having served as the midwife of national deliverance. Over the hill, a breeding ground of nation builders, constructing trait by trait, precept upon precept, character-toting, culture-shaping leaders. Over the hill, where independence was born, where the naval string of bohemianization is buried, where Junkanoo got polished. Over the hill, where sense and sensitivity were kneaded into the dough of children's souls, where people reverently genuflected to the image of God in every man. Over the hill, East Street, Market Street, Blue Hill Road, Bain Town, Grantstown, Anderson Street, Augusta Street, to Fort Hill, McPherson Street, Over the Hill, McCullough Corner, Hay Street, Glinton Square, where? Mason's Edition, Jail Alley, Lewis Street, Over the Hill, the Coakleys, the Smiths, the Johnsons, the Blydens, the DeStoops, the Grants and the Coopers, the McPhersons and the Pindlings, the Allens and the Winders, Over the Hill. The Hannas, the Bostricks, the Burnsides, the Bethels, the Walkers, the Enuses, and the Thompsons, the McCartneys, and the Gibsons, over the hill. What if we went back and dug into the soil of our glorious past? And what if we studied the roots and found the patterns of Bahamian unity and success 
and progress and superimpose those on the social ills of Lil Nassau, the social ills of the Bahamas in general. What would happen? What would happen if we really understood where we came from? Our heritage is not ghetto. Our language is not profanity. Our resolution is not violence. We are Bahamians, kings and queens, gentlemen and ladies, athletes and warriors in every sphere, geniuses and priests, artists and leaders, and much of it started over the hill. Then and now. Welcome back. Today we are talking with Pat Bizard. Pat, just before the break we were talking about the Children's Choir. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, I think I was talking about the, the, what led up really to the organization of, the, of that choir. Um, the, the youth part of the 10th anniversary celebrations, that youth choir remained because later um, um, Cleo was Adley was invited to take over that choir, which was very good, and um, who had just come from school, so he had so much to, to share and has done an awesome, awesome job. And, um, but the children, the choir from the school, that, that lapsed. But we had in our neighborhood an old gentleman that we used to call Daddy O. Now, Daddy O was a single um, gentleman one of the older members of the community. And Daddy O um, helped all the children. He knew he was an avid reader. He could talk to you in Spanish. He would talk about Latin. He'd talk about all these things. And if you had any um, lesson that, and homework that you had to do, or project you had to do, everybody sat on his porch, because he helped. And so that was almost the, the neighborhood melting pot. And then Daddy O died. When Daddy O passed, well, the neighborhood Everybody was in mourning as, as such. But so what we decided to do was to invite all of the kids in the neighborhood, particularly those who, the older ones, everyone, we brought them together to sing at his funeral. And um, so we sang at the funeral. And so I approached Af Audrey afterwards, sometime afterwards. It, was, it, it felt like a letdown to just let it go. And I said to her, I said, you know, I, I showed her what I had presented to Clement before. I said, this never came into being. I said, but somehow we probably could link it to, into the youth choir that was um, present at the time. And um, so we talked. We approached um, the MP, Norman Gay at the time, and he um, called a town meeting of all the parents in, the, in, the, in that area. And um, we met at the Knights of King George Hall. On Blue Hill Road. On Blue Hill yes. Road, that's right. And he had us present what we, we thought um, that we would like to do. And um, then he spoke and encouraged the parents. And then made arrangements for us to meet in the music room at so College of the Bahamas. And Amazing. so our, very good. our first meeting was mm -hmm. at the College of the Bahamas Music Room mm -hmm. and um, with children from the community, from the area, as well as from the area schools. Mm -hmm. So over the years, um, how many children have passed through the National <laughs> Children's Choir? <laughs> Hundreds. And how do you go about choosing the children? Or do they have to audition or anything like that? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Now we've had hundreds of children pass through the choir. The choir grew from 26 and it must almost be 106 now mm -hmm. because we, I'll tell you more about the other group. Yes. But um, they have to audition, each child. They, they come, they, we ask them not to prepare. We don't need them to prepare for, to, to, some, to have, give us something staged. Mm -hmm. So we ask them, either tell them what we want them to sing or they could come with a song in their head. 
um, which is sometimes very dicey, because <laughs> um, we had one child come to said, 10 cents, 5 cents, <laughs> dollar, dollar, dollar. <laughs> So are there any academic requirements? Do they have to have a certain um, level? Of yes, well, after, after entering the choir, mm -hmm. they have to maintain, when we first started, they had to maintain a 3.5. You had to maintain, if not, take a sabbatical. Yes. Um, we told them we don't want any dumb singers. Um, we had some parents who complained, saying that the standards were too high, and the, this and that and the next, and what have you. So. Um, after thought, we said, you know what, we'll make it three point. Mm, you, that yes. you can't beat any less than that. So and you're stuck to that. They, we've stuck to yes. that. You have Which to be good, right. three point or no. Mm -hmm. Other than the music and singing, what other lessons do you teach the children? Well, we, we try to develop the whole child. And, you know, to sing, that's one thing. They should be able to speak properly. And also, we, we, we talk to them about health issues. We've had a person come in and speak to them about how they should care for themselves, take um, their um, bodies, how to be healthy and what have you. And also etiquette, particularly when we travel. Um, we have traveled all over the world and for kids not to be able to know how to eat and grab into food and not knowing how to stand properly and wait and you, you know that sort yes, of thing I understand that. and how the young girls should sit and as my mother she was a stickler with etiquette you must sit with your legs crossed at the ankles you must sit upright and I spent many many nights walking with a book on my head to walk erect <laughs> the lessons <laughs> well learned and now you're passing that one passing to children it, passing it which on. is very good what, where have you traveled with the children? I know they, that's an edu education in itself, yes. all the places that they've traveled. Yes, yes. We try to give the children as much international experience and exposure. Um, we've traveled all over the United States, um, New York, um, Washington for the, the Quincentennial, and um, at, we went to Atlanta, Columbus, Georgia for the Quincentennial there. Um, for the Folk art at the Smithsonian, we were in 1994, we were in Washington and represented the Bahamas there. And um, we've been to London and Canada, New York, um, Germany, Russia, where we went. And I'm sure we came first, but they said we came second. <laughs> <laughs> and well, of course, Russia okay. came first. Yes, okay. They couldn't allow the only people of color <laughs> to be them. <laughs> to be them. But no, we, so, and there were 68 countries. What, what sorts of kind of support do you get well, from the general public? Because I, I think that it could be better. Much, much better. Well, you see, a, a lot of people, they feel that it's children. And we need to get that, and, and I don't want to get my preach on, because mm -hmm. I'll get a preach on right preach. about here. <laughs> but <laughs> the Bible says, train up a child. That's right not an old man and not a, a, a middle age or what have you. Train up a child so that when they're old you don't have a problem. But we're having a problem now with that middle group because we allowed the children to run wild. Um, what they said we allowed the, the men to sow their wild oats and not take care of those oats. And so those oats grew wild and now they're chasing around some of the yes, men who yes, sow yes, the oats. Yes. So the, the, I think uh, 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 we, we've gotten support, like we have our patron, Sir Durbin Knowles. Um, every year he gives us a, don a special donation that assists us with our travel. And um, we have some persons who always, if we're having a concert, would buy some tickets. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, you, you don't get that support. So what sort of parental um, involvement is there? Are the parents, do the parents help in that regard? So, let's say some of them. And where do, where do the children come from? You know, across section of society. Huh? Everywhere. Mm -hmm. We have um, the very rich and we have the very poor. We have kids that we have to, I make uniforms for and you got to buy clothes for them. And so it's wide. We've had um, kids from the Ranfilly homes for children. Um, once there is the talent, and as I always say that um, God has no respect when it comes to talent. He throws it out and gives it to every, anybody. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to be of a particular hue or family. Or, or status, we have we have found 
talent all, all over. I think that what you and Audrey are doing is really commendable and you are really unsung heroines in my book. Both of you are really icons, cultural icons, both of you. How do we get people to become more involved and to understand the rich heritage that we have in this country and to appreciate what we have as Bahamians? I think, see, this is one of the reasons I traveled with the children. Because once they see, um, um, when we were in Russia, and they took them to where Ch to Tchaikovsky's house, old house, not no mansion, or, you know, that we would think, oh, this is what we'll preserve. All broke down house, Tchaikovsky's home. But you have to take your shoes off because you don't, they don't want you to carry any sand or anything in there. And then you had to walk in a straight line or else those old ladies stand on the side, they take you outside, outside. It was precious. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and you, you use that as a stepping stone to talk about what we have and what we can preserve. And then they start talking with, we could talk about with Timothy Gibson's home and where he grew up. And th these are, are cultural heritage things that we have with us that we do not expose, expose the children, the to, the children yes. to, you know, and it, it's sad when I hear children, when you ask them, who wrote the national anthem, huh? And they're going, who wrote the pledge? Who did this? Who did that? Um, have you ever been to the, 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 the central bank? Where is it? Government house. The these are simple, <laughs> yes. that's my point. These yes. are simple, ordinary, I'm not even talking about um, because we have on our calendar for the 25th, and our tw we're celebrating 25 years, and for our 25th, some of the activities, they are going around to all these places. That's very good. Every month, we are going to take a tour. We're going to go to the art gallery. We're going to come here at Dungalik. We're going to go wherever it is that our kids need to That's know. That's a well-rounded education that they all need. See, but we need to be proud. Our problem is that we still have, I would hate to say it, but we still have that slave mentality where the master tell you what's good. And, and it don't, not what you have is good, it's what we bring in and what is foreign that's good. But we have to respect ourselves. And I keep saying there are certain music, genre of music that we like, to, um, our young people like to hear and like to be uh, associated with. But you go to the country where that music comes from, you don't hear no Junkanoo. I said, do you hear any cowbells? And we were in one of those countries. I said, do you hear any cowbells here? We turn on the radio. I said, tell me if you hear anything Bahamian as long as you listen. I said, but on our Bahamian radio station, every other one or more than we have, we have to have Bahamian sections of the, uh, on a radio station that's in the Bahamas. I know, that's very sad. That's Absolutely. My point is that we have to take everything has to be equalized. When I go away, even if I am a track star, I take my culture with me. I take a part of the Bahamas with me. And we, we will end up as, with, as a people without an identity if we do not train our children from now, if we do not introduce some of our adults who are now in college and don't know some of the things we're talking about, um, all this, when you talk, so you say rhyming spiritual, say, well, no, what's that? It sounds like something to eat. Or you, you understand, we do not, our children have not been exposed. Our children have not been told. We are not telling our story. We are using someone else's story and adapting it as ours. I think we could talk forever e about ever this. Ever and ever. But unfortunately, our yeah. time has run out. Yeah. Thank you so much for being with us. It's wonderful to have been here. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for watching The Bahamas Then and Now. We encourage you to continue watching this series, and we urge you to invite others to do the same. Yeah.